OMG, guys, our AC Antiverse, i.e. the Ant Room, has entered a new era of sorts. It seems gone are the days when one of our ant colonies lived completely on their own in an ant farm, devoid of any interaction with other creatures or microorganisms. In our past videos, I have shown you how putting together small and big, vicious and friendly, prey and predatory creatures coexisting within their mini world can create healthy and thriving vivariums. Easy to make, but awesome for observing nature. We've entered the era of vivariums. This week, you are yet again about to see how I transform one of the most famous forest tanks on this channel into a beautiful, exotic pineapple beach paludarium. Pineapples, you ask? Yes, I know, pretty random, right? But just watch until the end to see one of the most unique paludarium creations I've ever made in my life. And perhaps you can create one too. Plus, I got some other updates on the other colonies in the ant room whose symbiotic setups have proven to be quite the success. AC family, sit back, relax, and enjoy these awesome scenes of nature in tanks as we marvel at the beauty and wonders of the small, big worlds we created and continue to create together in our AC Antiverse. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy! A trapjaw ant licks the juices of hemolymph and guts oozing from the dying superworm. I had cut the superworm up and threw it into their territories to provide the colony nourishment. She was lucky to stumble across it, and so she now has the task of informing the colony of the bounty. There she goes to tell the gang. It isn't long before a few of her sisters return to the site to join in on the feast. This whole superworm will be enough nourishment for a colony of thousands for a whole day which is why it's so important for them to eat as much as they can now and finish it up before any other creatures come along to steal it. Because as you know, in nature, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. I'll be getting into what other creatures these trapjaw ants compete with and need to worry about in a sec. But if you're new to the channel, these are trapjaw ants, known scientifically as Odontomachus similimus, whom we on this channel have named the Jawbreakers. They have massive bear trap jaws, capable of opening 180 degrees and shutting with lightning speed and force. They use this special power for various things like cutting the superworm up, as you can see her doing here, jumping into the air, as we've seen in previous videos, and of course, attacking. I had the misfortune of being bit by one of these ants, and I promise, it felt like I was electrocuted. It hurts so bad. Those jaws are one of the fastest moving appendages in the animal kingdom. It kind of makes me nervous because these ants, the jawbreakers, are about to have an extreme renovation done to their territories. And I have to do it with the colony still inside. Which means if I want this to be as pain free as possible, I'm gonna have to do it carefully. I also have given them extra food today to minimize the number of ants foraging at ground level to make my job a bit easier. This here is a cricket, which they've already found and have been working on. I think this ant is going to attempt to bring this entire carcass home. Good luck. Now before we go ahead and give these lands a makeover, there's something important I need to address first that applies to each and every single one of you. So hear me out. A lot of you AC family have been saying you've been subscribed to the channel, but haven't been getting notifications of these new videos. YouTube isn't perfect and has glitches. If you know you're subscribed, could you guys do me a favor and check to see if you're still subscribed? And if you want to be reminded of these weekly, soon to be twice weekly videos, be sure to hit the bell icon and choose all. It breaks my heart every time I see comments from you guys saying I haven't uploaded in so long, when in actuality, I have been every week as normal. But YouTube hasn't been notifying you of my videos. I've tried to contact YouTube support, but they've told me it's up to you guys to check 
and make sure you're subscribed and part of the notification squad. Whatever the case, let's move on. So now for the great renovation. Here's why the lands of the jawbreakers needed to be changed up. The Hacienda del Dorado, a lush kingdom that has witnessed tales of millions of ants and other organisms, has undergone the most changes of any terrarium in the entire Antiverse. It was once the home of a huge super colony of yellow crazy ants, an OG colony of this channel, called the Golden Empire. But out of nowhere, the Golden Empire was crippled by a plague of blood-sucking mites and had to be relocated to rehabilitate. They now live in an epic AC ant farm setup, along with teams of beneficial creatures living with them in harmony. With the Hacienda del Dorado now vacant, the next ant colony in line for a larger space were the Jawbreakers, this colony of trapjaw ants. They turned out to be the perfect colony for this enormous glass structure because they don't like heights and don't climb glass, so keeping them contained was a breeze. And so today, four months later, this is what the Hacienda del Dorado looks like. Look! The plants had grossly overgrown. The leaves of this green nephthitis has totally reached the mesh. Yup, this plant's gonna need a cutting or it'll completely push against the mesh cover and grow out of this tank. Also, here, the swampy marsh near the waterfall has grown a bit stagnant. Water from our waterfall has found a leak hole in our plastic catcher, which is so exposed now. It used to be covered in moss, and so did the rocky wall of our waterfall. A lot of that moss had died out. Guess growing conditions weren't suitable for the species. It has thrived on this beach plateau of the pond, but as you can see, the lands were in need of a serious makeover. All that exposed plastic were cringe. But despite how unattractive the Hacienda del Dorado had grown, animal life within it has continued to flourish quite well. Time to meet some of the creatures the jawbreakers live with. Check it out. In the pond are these cute little cherry shrimp and raspora fish. They help keep the aquatic environment clean. Now remember the vampire crabs I introduced in the AC Antiverse five months ago? As you saw in a previous video, I decided to put some of them in the Hacienda del Dorado. Check out this one eating organic bits from the top of the waterfall rocks. It's amazing to see how it managed to climb up here. By the way, our vampire crabs need a name. So please take the time to vote for a name here based on my top five picks from you, the AC family, in a previous video. Thank you, AC Council, for your input. In case you might have seen a famous BBC video where ants were wiping out a population of land crabs from Christmas Island, don't worry, that doesn't happen all the time. In some cases, ants can get along with crabs. Case in point, the vampire crab inhabitants of the Selva de Fuego the epic paludarium kingdom of one of the most meat-hungry and aggressive ants I've ever owned. Fire Nation Fire Ants. See? A Fire Nation worker ant crawls on this crab in search of anything organic it can eat, trapped in spaces of its exoskeleton. Like a cowbird on a cow, this crab could offer a hidden treasure on its body. It's an interesting symbiotic relationship because the crab benefits from the ants cleaning areas it can't reach on its exoskeleton. And the crab eats any garbage or dead ant bodies the ants dump into the river, thereby keeping the river cleaner. The crab also benefits from the protection of a massive stinging colony of Amazonian ant warriors living all around. The crab and the fire ants are friends in a sweet biological partnership. Now speaking of biological partnerships, another territory is proving to benefit from this mixing of creatures as well. The Canopy of Fortesha, our treetop forest home to our aggressive weaver ant colony, the Emerald Empire, has developed into a wild jungle of a world. A month ago, 
I upped the bioactivity of these territories and introduced a colony of dubia roaches and superworms to roam around the land. Today, the creatures all live occupying their particular niches. The superworms and roaches feed from the leaf litter, eating up decaying leaves from the trees. And every now and then, the weaver ants will hunt the weakened individuals. Check out this cockroach nymph they've hauled up into the trees and are consuming just under the nest. Talk about strong legs these weaver ants possess. Whoops! If one ant lets go too early, they could drop this massive carcass. Thankfully, they take shifts holding the roach so they can rest while the roach is being consumed. But as the creator of worlds of the Antiverse, I had to make some edits to plans. Remember the death sprites our micro hillid frogs last used to keep the population of the jawbreakers in check? I've decided to move the final frogs out because I would like the jawbreaker population to get much bigger. They're now living in this temporary holding cell. Does this glass enclosure seem familiar to you? Yep. This was the former home of my goody tarantula, but marshed up. I can't decide though whether I should keep these frogs or let these frogs go back into the wild where I got them, seeing as they've successfully completed what I needed them for. What do you guys say? Vote here, AC Council. All right, and now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Pineapple Beach Paludarium. Let's begin the transformative process of the Hacienda del Dorado. This was going to be one of the coolest things I've ever created on the channel. First on the agenda of business was to chop these overgrown green nephthitis plants. Here we go. For those who may be concerned about the plants, don't worry, because these leafy plants are resilient. Even if I clear cut them, they'll grow back. Plus, I'll be planting these cuttings into a pot and use them to decorate my home. See, they have roots. All other clippings I'll be using to feed the creatures of the AC nucleus, our composter and breeding chamber of bioactivating soil creatures. Next, I wanted to remove some of these big driftwood pieces and carefully move this massive driftwood piece closer to the back. I instantly saw that the jawbreakers had been disturbed and were now scrambling around. I had to be extra careful now not to get bitten nor destroy their current nest tunnels too much. And after three careful hours of work, the new Hacienda del Dorado was complete. AC Family Behold! the newly refurbished Hacienda del Dorado. Isn't it just beautiful? It was an exotic and tropical paradise. Ooh, I can't wait to show you around. Okay, first and foremost, let's look at all the new plants. AC family, I want to address the pink pineapples in the room. My favorite plants here, of course, are these gorgeous and vibrant red pineapple plants, known scientifically as Ananas bracteatis. Its radiant colors gave energizing explosions of reds and pinks to the lands. Something I've never done before, but looks totally amazing. I see them almost as plant pets now. <laughs> I also installed a variety of epiphytic bromeliads, also relatives of the pineapple. These are air plants called telangias. I just love the look of them. I installed some vein plants, which add a glorious complementary mix of dark greens and reds to the lands. And also, some peperomia, growing in patches all around. I planted some calathea in the marshy swamp to help keep this area cleaner. I also removed the plastic shelf and filled the marsh with java moss, so that more water could cascade into this marsh area, get filtered naturally by the calathea plants and moss and spill into our pond. Doesn't it look just stunning? Ah, mossy swamp heaven. Speaking of waterfalls, I improved that area too. I planted little bits of java moss along the rocky waterfall, which has proven to do well in our other paludarium, Pacmania of Jabba the Hutt. 
our Suriname Horned Frog. My hope is it continues to thrive and cover this rocky wall. I left the bird's nest fern inside, as well as some of the old green nephthitis plant. But another of my top favorite things about this new design, guys, is what I see as the icing on the cake. This white pebbly pathway completed the entire pineapple beach look of this paludarium. Doesn't it all look pretty unique? Unlike any paludarium we've ever made before. It actually reminds me of a river beach I once visited in Borneo. Habitats like this actually exist in the wild. And look, our inhabitants seem to enjoy the newly rejuvenated lands. The shrimp, fish, and snails are enjoying their waters, which they can probably tell by now feel cleaner thanks to the secondary marsh filter they have now. And so are the crabs. Looks like this crab decided to take advantage of the renovations happening and stole the jawbreaker superworm during all the commotion. <laughs> what a sneaky fellow. Okay, maybe that's your housewarming gift, Mr. Crab. And of course, the stars of the show. The jawbreakers also showed signs of settling into these new lands. I could see most of them digging their tunnels now, and many individuals taking a stroll around, exploring their new lands with wonder. As a housewarming gift, I gave them another superworm, which they proceeded to feed from and rip, rip, rip chunks of flesh off to take home into their underground chambers. So I think it was safe to say this new renovation project of the Hacienda del Dorado and species mixing has been a great success, wouldn't you say? Over time, I truly enjoyed watching all the inhabitants going about their business in these great lands which offered various microhabitats for the inhabitants. We have a canopy of wood and bromeliads above, an undergrowth of plants and pineapples, a marshy swamp area, a rocky waterfall, and a pond. I do feel like with all of these amazing niches, we can still stock this vivarium with more creatures. What do you guys think? Leave your suggestions for other creatures you think we can add to these lands and watch integrate into this amazing community of life. I was thinking possibly a species of frog that won't eat our crabs nor our ants, and perhaps a species of lizard that won't eat our ants nor bother our crabs, but can eat crickets or roaches perhaps. Whatever the case, I'll definitely need to do more research before deciding and can't wait to hear your ideas, AC family. And so once again, our projects have been pretty eye-opening. We've built some pretty awesome biological partnerships in these worlds within glass we created. And it is just so awesome to know you guys are joining me on this never-ending journey of discovery and creation. I also love that a lot of you watching are getting into this hobby of keeping various ants and creatures. I know you guys are capable of creating amazing worlds like this in your home. If you're wanting to start with an ant colony, I suggest starting small and simple. My website, AntsCanada.com, offers some easy-to-use homes in which you can build complex communities of various creatures living with ants. Just a reminder though that if you're going to mix larger species together like crabs and frogs and such, you need to research every species carefully and ensure every creature has their own space and needs met so that there isn't any overbearing competition for space or resources, as well as an imbalance of sorts. I love this new era of vivariums we're entering, AC family. It's a new and holistic mindset for the keeping of the wildlife we care for. I've actually been doing a lot of research lately on permaculture, of all things. I've recently become a farmer myself, and no, not just ant farms, but actual farming farming. <laughs> and one of the things I've come to realize based on permaculture principles is that for an entire biological system to work, you can't just isolate components of the system and expect it to thrive forever. But rather, you need to include all components of the system in order for it to be sustainable. This means you can't have just ants in an ant farm and expect them to thrive forever. 
Some strong ants might, but there would be pieces missing. The ants need their posse of beneficial creatures like springtails, isopods, and beneficial mites to help them out in life. Imagine us being placed into a foreign world where we need to survive ourselves. Without stores that sell us food, garbage men who deal with our garbage, doctors who help us heal, construction workers who build us homes, internet and television to educate us on what's going on, etc. But if all of that was placed into the world, we'd all thrive. I've learned wildlife is kind of the same. There's a whole economy of relationships happening out in Mother Nature, and we get to see evidence of it more and more in our ant room lately. It's funny. If you leave ants in a clean ant farm long enough, beneficial creatures just end up finding their way in and populating the ant farm anyway. That's how strong the bond between these creatures that naturally share a space is. And that bond to me is such a beautiful thing to witness. As was said in one of my favorite movies of all time, life finds a way. Thank you for finding your way to this video and channel, guys. I hope to see you again next week. It's Ant Love forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? Man, I love the new Hacienda del Dorado, and it's now one of my favorite paludariums of all time. Cue Kanye West interruption. Guys, also please hit the subscribe button and bell icon for notifications now to keep updated on all my videos of the true stories of the lives of our ant room. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really help a lot. Also, I wanted to let everyone know that AntsCanada.com is having its big AC annual holidays promo, the 2020 sale. That's 20% off all hybrid series ant farms and gear packs from now until January 2020, plus a free copy of our newly updated Ultimate Ant Keeping Handbook, right now at AntsCanada.com. Click the link in the description to get your AC ant farm today. AC in our colony. I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you'd like to see what creature I discovered in our nucleus when I placed some clippings inside. You may be quite shocked, just as I was. So go check it out. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what helps a goody tarantula stick to glass? Congratulations to Bruno Ventura 22, who correctly answered, the set tools, microscopic hairs in the pot tufts. Congratulations, Bruno. You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC Question of the Week, we ask, what is your favorite thing about the new Hacienda del Dorado's design? Leave your answer in the comment section, and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever. <laughs>